the next few videos starting with this one we're going to take a closer look at the wave equation now there's different forms of the wave equation here we're going to look at the wave equation of what we call a wave train let's say that we have a string and on one end we're just continuously moving the string up and down so that we're continually pouring energy into the string that energy will then displace itself along the string causing a wave to move to the right with velocity v now notice that the string particles will move up and down the spring particles do not move to the right it's just the energy of the wave that moves to the right it's just a string that moves up and down so there's displacement in the y direction and then the velocity in the x direction notice that this is then defined by the wavelength and that the, the, the greatest distance from the central equilibrium point of the string to the highest displacement is called the amplitude of the wave now the displacement y so the particles in the wave that are being displaced in the y direction make our function uh, of the position in the x direction and the time that has elapsed for example as this whole wave moves to the right if I just stay for example at this point right here notice that, that or I'll go over here it's a little better right there so if I go to this point right there at this location notice that at this moment in time at that location my displacement is this large right here but then as the wave moves to the right a very small amount of time later when this wave has now moved like this you can see that now my displacement hey, is a little bit smaller a small amount of time later when the wave continues to move to the right my displacement changes you can see from any point along on the x-axis the displacement of the wave depends upon how much time has elapsed and how fast the wave moves to the right if I then on the other hand take a snapshot saying okay this is what the wave has is in this moment in time and I don't let any time elapse and I then go to different locations on the x-axis for example here or there or there if I'm over here my displacement is this much if I'm over here my displacement is in this much in the negative direction over here is this much in the negative direction over here is this much in the positive direction so the displacement y does depend upon where you are in the x-position and how much time has elapsed so let's first start out for to make things a little bit simpler let time equals zero so in other words time is frozen and let's say that time is frozen at this very moment in time when the wave, when the wave is right here okay so what does that wave look like well that looks like a sine or a cosine function and since at time equals zero so let's the time equals zero the amplitude is a maximum right here well, well that looks like a cosine function so we could say that y is equal to the amplitude a times the cosine of some function of x uh, not some function of x but some constant times x so let's see where this is simply a constant now the question is what is that constant equal to so that we can describe this wave well notice if an entire wavelength has gone by like this and we're back over here at the very same position as before if an entire wavelength has gone by then at that particular uh, value for x I get the very same value as I had when x was equal to zero so for what value of the cosine of cx so the way to look at it is so the cosine of zero x is equal to the cosine of cx which is equal to uh, one because then I multiply one times a and I get this maximum displacement which I get again when I'm over here so what is this position right here x is equal to question mark so that I get the very same value for the displacement as I get when x is equal to zero so from that we should be able to figure out what c is equal to in this case I want this value to be the same as zero and remember that the angle is repetitive so I get the cosine of zero must equal the cosine of two pi which must equal the cosine of 4 pi which equal to the cosine of 6 pi and so forth so that means that for every displacement of 2 pi or I shouldn't say displacement for every 2 pi I'm back to the position where I get my maximum amplitude so that means that cx should equal 2 pi so cx equals 2 pi for the first location which means that x is equal to 2 pi divided by c what value should I get for c how far do I have to travel in x direction so what is this distance equal to 
Well, I know this distance is equal to lambda, the wavelength. So if I plug in wavelength for x, so that means I'm going to plug in a wavelength for x. So I have wavelength is equal to 2 pi divided by c. And if I solve that equation for c now, I get c is equal to 2 pi divided by the wavelength. Bingo, that's what I was looking for. I wanted to find the value for c here so that this equation represents this wave function right there. So let's, let me plug that in and see what we get. So we have y is equal to a times the cosine of, instead of c, I'm now going to write 2 pi over lambda times x. Now notice, if x is 0, I get the cosine of 0, that's 1. 1 times a gives me a, which is correct right here. If I now plug in one wavelength for x, so I'll let x equal lambda, and I plug that in here, so let's try that. So I'm going to write y when x equals lambda, and of course t is equal to 0. I'm ignoring t for now. So this would be equal to a times the cosine of 2 pi over lambda. And of course, instead of x, I'm going to write lambda, like so. Notice that the lambdas cancel out, and I'm left with the cosine of 2 pi. And of course, the cosine of 2 pi, that's again 1, because the same 2 pi is the same as 0, and 1 times a is a, I get this value right here. What if I plug in 2 pi, or not 2 pi, but 2 lambda? Let, let's go to the next position right here, right there, where now I've traveled another lambda. So now my x is equal to 2 lambda. Okay, we have the value of y, which is displacement, when x equals 2 lambda, and of course t is still equal to 0. I'm simplifying things, so letting t equal 0. And I plug that in here, my equation. I get this is equal to a times the cosine of my constant was 2 pi over lambda. And now instead of x, I write in 2 lambda, 2 lambda right there. And notice that the lambda cancel out, and I'm left with the cosine of 4 pi. And of course, the cosine of 4 pi is again 1. And again, I have my maximum displacement. So it looks like I found my correct equation. I guess I should box this point right here. So that y, which is a function of um, x and t, t kept 0, is equal to a times the cosine of 2 pi over lambda times x. So this is a very special constant right here. We call that constant the wave constant, and we give that value the value of k. So we introduce a new value or a new constant, k, which is equal to 2 pi over lambda, which is now known as the wave constant or the wave number. Which means that now if we're going to write an equation describing this wave motion like that, we write it as such. We say that uh, y, the displacement in the vertical direction, which is a function of x, and a function of t, which in this case we're going to set equal to zero to simplify things. It's going to be equal to the amplitude of the wave times the cosine of kx, where k is now understood to be 2 pi over lambda, known as the wave number. So that's the simple form of the equation, simply ignoring the fact that the wave is moving to the right, and so that this is constantly changing as a function of time. We will look at that in the next video to expand our equation. So in this case, we said the time is frozen. That means t is equal to zero. So we ignore that part of the equation. So we're going to look at it in, form of the, in terms of the position x. And so the displacement can now be described simply as a cosine or a sine function. And I say, well, if you said there's a cosine function, how can you write this as a sine function? Well, I can have it start at a different location. For example, I can have the wave look like this. Notice it has this very same wavelength. The wavelength now goes from there to there. It's the same wavelength, but it has a different starting point. At t equals 0, the value of the displacement is 0. So that can be described by simply changing the cosine into a sine function. So I can say y as a function of x and t equal to 0 is equal to a times the sine of kx. And notice it's the very same equation just has a different starting point, and it doesn't really matter if you write it as a times, a times the cosine of kx or a times the sine of kx. It's really the same thing. And that's how you develop the wave equation. If you want to see the second part of the wave equation, then tune into the next video, and then we'll take care of the portion where time is no longer equal to zero and see how that equation develops.